And we're back. What's a more satisfactory in this stupidly oversized main bus design we're going with? Hmm. It's ridiculous, but I, I do kind of like the look of it. Anyway, today, top right, we got to, we have to complete phase three. We've got to build ourselves a whole bunch of engines and things. However, the very next step is not to build those. We have to build a few intermediate products before we can finish those off. So next up on our list is going to be green circuits. However, there's a few recipes for these that are available. This here is the four recipes we have access to. I've just done it through the website because it's just a lot simpler. Now, we could go with an all-oil based approach using rubber and petroleum coke. Fortunately, not as efficient as you would like. This one is incredibly inefficient in plastic as well. I mean, you're going to need two copper sheets and then four plastic for every circuit board. Uh, for example, say the silica one, which is the one we're going to end up using. This one uses 11 copper sheets for five, so you're working out about two copper sheets per, but you're also working out about two silica per circuit board. And the silica is just well, cheaper and easier to get your hands on than the plastic, and the plastic we have other uses for. And then you've got down here plastic and quick wire, and quick wire is, well, it's kind of rare. You don't want to be wasting quick, quick wire because it comes out of caterium, and caterium is usually harder to come by. Silica, we can produce that pretty simply, actually. If you look over here to the right, we're actually bringing up crystal from down here. Uh, actually, let's go grab a little bit of a speed boost before we head that direction. Uh, so we've got crystal coming all the way from down here, which actually has a second crystal mine as well, which we haven't been utilizing. But what we can do is go grab that second one and get that producing entirely nothing but silica. Shouldn't take more than a few minutes, so excuse me one moment. We'll just uh, stretch out a production platform that way and we can run all of the silica up there and onto our bus. Uh, we're going to have to add in a bunch more belts, but you know, this can take, we can manage. A little bit of a change around here. We had to rotate the mine. That's uh, also a Mark II miner now. That one comes through here and it feeds into all of these uh, silica production facilities. Now, we've actually got too many for the belt. As in, these are producing 37.5. They're going to max out the belt in no time at all. And you notice, yeah, that we've actually got a little bit of a backlog going on. But all that silica comes down here, uh, goes a little bit wonky across there and then straight up here. And then at the top, we get to see it go straight in here, where we have a little bit of a stockpile, just in case we need some of that. It's useful for some of the uh, lights and things like that we're going to need. And then it goes all the way down here before eventually getting thrown onto our bus. Now, I should point out, this is the newest section of our bus, as in, we've got six layers here, six layers here, and another six here. All of these are full, and then there's just the silica there. Now let's plug all of that in to make some more green, well, make some green circuits. I'm thinking just two of these should be fine. Where is it? Silica. Yep. Two of these will be producing about, ooh, 25 of them. That's actually going to be way more than we need, but we might as well, well, way more than we need for now. Give me one minute while I just plug in all these bits and pieces. All we really need is to plug in copper sheets and silica, both of which are on the bus over there. A little bit of pulling resources off the belt. We've got our copper coils coming in. What the hell did we even call these things again? Copper sheets. Yes. And the silica. They're all running into these machines and they're starting to produce the circuit boards. And the circuit boards will get spit out this section and get thrown onto our bus. Uh, well, first we're of course going to stick them into a storage container. We're going to want to have a stockpile of those. Now i got to figure out how I'm gonna, which, where I'm going to stick them on here. Probably next layer up. I'm thinking layer two. There we go. Green circuits should be on layer two on the fourth section of our bus and there we go they start flowing along this will allow us to compu produce computers this is actually working out quite nicely um, all right next up computers computers are actually well you know what let's go over the recipes first this here is the three recipes we could potentially use to make computers However, things have got a little complicated in figuring out which is more efficient, namely because, well, we have a special alternative recipe for screws, an alternative recipe for circuit boards, uh, the wire that goes into the cable has an alternative recipe, the crystal oscillators have an alternative recipe. There's a few alternative recipes knocking around here, which makes this all very complicated to figure out. So I did was I went onto the calculator, and this one here is made using uh, the regular recipe, this one here is made using the crystal recipe, and this one here is made using the caterium recipe, and it's all set to just one. And then all I did was I, I noted down how much it cost to produce each one. For example, this one uses 24.4 uh, copper ingots and 0.6 caterium. This is what it looks like if we were, uh, we sort them out. Okay, this is your basic recipe. It uses a bit of steel. There's the copper, the 24.4 copper, 0.6 caterium, 22 silica, 18 plastic. And you'll notice here, this one is the cheapest amount in copper, the second cheapest in caterium, and silica-wise, they're all, well, pretty much about the same. This one uses a bit of quartz and silica. 
And then this one uses the least amount of sort of plastic material, seven rubber as opposed to 12 and 18. So this is the one we're going to go with. It just seems to be the most cost efficient one based on all of the other previous recipes we're doing. It's just, it's getting a little confusing the further deeper down we get and the more alternative recipes we combine on top of each other. This was actually really quick and easy to set up. The reason being we're using, well, just regular assemblers for these. We don't even need three ingredients for this particular recipe. So done. That's, um, that's computers being made. This bus system is just way too convenient. All right, let's just uh, chuck these into the containers and then we're going to have to go into heavy modular frames. Heavy modular frames might be a little bit trickier. Just, just, just a teensy tad. This here is the three different recipes for heavy modular frames. Um, yeah, this gets all sorts of complicated, but we, we've, we've done up a spreadsheet. We basically went through all of them, picked up how much of each it requires, and then just a quick spreadsheet here, just to, just to show the differences in resource requirements. For example, just in steel alone, regular modular frames, as in the just the normal recipe, is insanely expensive. 110 steel per minute. Hells no. Just just no. That's that's too many steel ingots. Uh, also, five plastic and 25 concrete. Then it comes down to flexible frames and he and heavy encased frames. So these both use about, well, almost an identical amount of steel. This one uses slightly more plastic. This one uses more concrete. But this one also throws in a bunch of rubber. So heavy modular frames use... And a little bit more concrete, but less plastic and a tiny fraction more steel. These seem much easier to produce, in fact. Uh, so yeah, in fact, concrete is, is... I would prefer subbing in concrete for rubber because it's much easier to get your hands on. So we're going to be going with heavy encased frames. I was recommended to use heavy flexible frames, but from what I can see, this just seems to be better. Or this, this whole thing is so complicated when you get to this point. Uh, for example, let's just look at modular frames here. These are what we're putting into them. These modular frames, I'm pretty sure we're just using the basic modular frame recipe because it turned out to be cheaper. Uh, namely, we need reinforced plate and iron rods. Now, the reinforced plate, we're actually using the bolted iron plate alternative recipe, which means you've got to worry about screws and iron rods. And, oh, and for the iron plate itself, we're using another alternative recipe, which is steel coated plate made out of steel ingots and plastic. For the screws, we're using an alternative recipe where we're using steel beams. And for iron rods, we're using an alternative recipe where we use steel ingots. So, as you can imagine, this gets... this is just nuts. This is like trying to figure it out at this depth without actually having some sort of calculator to figure it out for you is incredibly complicated. But now that we know that the best version for us is probably in heavy encased frames, though I could still be wrong. At this point, I, I really don't care. I just want to get this started. This turned out to be, you know, not too bad to stick together. There's just four resources that go in, and I've put down two of them, though... Yeah, I wouldn't advise that. Um... Well, I put down two of them and then I worked out the numbers on this. You gotta remember, we were doing the numbers based on one modular frame per minute, but this produces 2.8. So just running one of them consumes about 190 steel ingots per minute. Uh, that's a lot. Like 190 steel ingots based on the fact that we have one steel belt and it runs about 270 steel ingots. This is expensive. This is hell of expensive. But there is a bonus to all of this. We have now managed to start producing all of the base materials we need to knock out the last of the tier requirements. So I'm going to head back to the hub. At the hub there is a couple of uh, little research things we can knock out that can really help us out. We actually have a couple of these tier requirements we have to knock out. We could have done this a while back, but I wanted to have these things all on the bus. We actually had enough heavy modular frames and computers we'd found from crash sites that we could have actually done these, but ah, it just didn't feel right. So we've got monorail train technology and expanded power infrastructure. This just gives us trains, this one, though, gives us conveyor belts Mark IV. This is going to be very important. Also, fuel generators, which are quite nice. Uh, with both of those selected, we can just knock them out. And that knocks out both six and seven, Milestone or beta reached. five and six tiers. A new set of buildings and vehicles need yep, gone. Uh, wait, why are you not finished? Yep, go. Sorry, we had to launch both of those. Milestone and now that both of those are done, the fuel generator. we can now get access to tier four transport belts. This is going to allow us to crank up steel production. Uh, let me demonstrate. Right here is our iron ore production. Now this iron, if you're unfamiliar with it, goes straight into steel production. We don't use the iron ore ingots for anything at all but making steel. It's just we've gone with a max steel approach. Now, one of the bonuses here is we only need half of the ingots. Well, let me rephrase this. 40 iron ingots produce 60 steel ingots. So this full 270 belt of iron ore is not going, is going to oversaturate this belt. So we're not going to be able to take advantage of all the stuff all the way going to the end. Unless we were to say, oh, I don't know, say grab uh, the belts and upgrade the ones on this side to Mark IV. Have we got all of these upgraded? 
And done, done, done. Now this takes reinforced, or was it not reinforced, encased steel beams. But assuming we're willing to go along the whole way, and yes, I am willing to do that, we can upgrade this whole thing the whole way along and drastically improve the amount of uh, steel ingots we're able to produce. In fact, this should crank us up to, I think, about 400. And then we can make a few more changes after that to improve it even more. Running all the way from top to bottom and double checking everything, we now have the entire steel ingot line upgraded to level 4 belts. That means we're, well, it can support about 470, but we're only pushing along about 400 because that's what we're producing right now. However, if we're willing to make a few minor changes, we can actually crank that up to the full 470. Now, oh, and all the rest of the belts we don't really care about. I mean, the thing is, we don't need that much plastic, we don't need that much, well, anything else, steel beams, uh, steel pipes, all that stuff. The steel ingots are use is going to be our main bottleneck. In fact, we can put along a second, no, no, we'll worry about that later. What we're going to do now is we're going to crank up iron production. All we've got to do is increase the amount of iron ore coming in here to the max belt limit, which is 470 or so. So all we have to do is upgrade the incoming transport belt. Uh, actually, one second. If we do this, hit that with that, that should upgrade that section. Then all I have to do is trace this all the way back to the iron mine. This iron mine down here is not going to be able to produce the necessary amount of iron ore, though. It's only producing 270. However, if we were to say, ooh, overclock that just a teensy weensy little bit, we can get it all the way up to 480, and it will now be able to saturate that belt. All we have to do now is go back up and add a few more iron smelters, and once we have enough of those in place, that will allow us to produce the maximum amount of iron ingots. Now, we don't need, we can't actually spend all those iron ingots, but, you know, I like to plan ahead. Uh, that all gets fed in here. All of this transport belt should have been upgraded already. Did, did, I, did I make sure? Yep, all of that's been upgraded to level 4, meaning we have level 4 iron ingots getting fed all the way along, meaning it should have enough iron ingots to support a full 470 steel ingots coming out the other side. And we've upgraded that transport belt as well, meaning, well, in theory, we could support 480 iron ingots going all the way along our main bus. However, there's one last thing we might want to take care of first, and that is the coal that comes in, because... Well, we're not bringing in enough coal just yet. You know, I had completely forgotten we were drawing this coal all the way from, well, quite a distance. And we were using two normal iron nodes. So we overclocked both of these to 240 apiece, bringing us up to the 480. And all of that goes, uh, yeah, it goes up this way. Oh my God. But it's done. We now have upgraded everything and we're now pulling in 480 steel ingots onto the bus, which means we can crank up that second modular frame factory. However, once we cranked up that second modular frame factory, we ran into a little bit of an issue. We were, uh, we were tearing through our steel pipes faster than we could replace them. We were, I think we only had four steel pipe production facilities going because that's all we needed, but now we need, well, a lot more. And we're actually replacing the steel pipes faster. That's, you gotta remember, the steel pipes are also being used to make these encased industrial beams, which we're not making enough of. Uh, so four of these is not enough. We're going to need to put in at least one more. In fact, two if we want to actually have any chance of producing enough uh, enough of these encased industrial beams to produce even more, well, encased industrial beams so that we can use them for transport belts. So we also have another problem. We're going to need to upgrade concrete as well. Yeah, it's just a, a never-ending upgrade spree right about now, just to make sure we can support all that heavy modular frame production. Do we need that much? I don't know, but I kind of don't want to stop just yet. There we go, we've actually upgraded concrete as well. So concrete production has been uh, drastically improved, as in we have ran level 4 transport belt all the way back to the limestone and quarries so that we can run the maximum amount of concrete production facilities. It's just about keeping up, I think. Mm. Now, this is sort of the joy of the uh, the main bus design, is that you don't have to build everything straight away, and as uh, more is required, you can just sort of tack it on. Oh god, what's our power at right about now? We should go find a power pole. There'll be one around here somewhere. There's one. How are we looking? Yeah, we're... we're we could potentially redline our grid, but... No, we're, we're, we're okay right about now. Um, well, for now, now that we've got all of the basic components done, it comes down to that top right section, we've got to finish those off. So we need 500 of whatever those things are called, and 100 of what the other ones are called. We can... we can tack those on at the end, it shouldn't be that bad, hopefully. Before we continue on, I decided to just throw up eight of those little battery things. Uh, the reason being, our power grid... well, we're not... we could potentially redline it now when we start adding on these last few things. We're not even close, we're only using about 2.6, 2.7, but it fluctuates a bit, and I'm worried that when we start bringing more and more stuff online, this will get out of control. 
Now these things here take about an hour to fully charge, but once they're fully charged, they can discharge at maximum speed. It's uh, 10, or is it 100 megawatts for, no, whatever. All, all that matters is once these are fully charged, it should be able to even out any flow problems we have. So we shouldn't accidentally redline our grid because if right now, if we redline our grid, our whole power network will shut down and we'll have to go do some uh, major changes. Anyway, to get this started, let's see, we've got to do these modular engines. Modular engines require motors, rubber, and a couple of smart plating. I think we'll just do it at, at its own line for the smart plating. And then after that, we're going to need the adaptive control units. This, uh, yeah. Uh, 10 circuit boards, no problems. Two heavy modular frames, no problems. Two computers, no problems. 15 automated wirings. Well, that requires this which is two satyrs, 40 wire, and one high-speed connector. So we're going to need to put high-speed to the connectors on the bus before we can do that. In fact, I think we'll do high-speed connectors right now. Just, yeah, let's start that now. A little bit of quick wire, a little bit of silica, a little bit of uh, electric, oh, what was it, circuit boards? And done. High-speed connectors in production. Now, I've underclocked them to 66 points, well, two-thirds. Namely because the quick wire is only produced at 60. And I could have put in two quick wire facilities, but I thought, you know what, let's just underclock these. It's simpler. And this way we get two out of here, and we get another two out of here, bringing us up to four. So, when we do actually get around to... Damn it. So when we do get around to building... Building the automated wiring using this alternative recipe will require 1.875 high-speed connectors. And we only need to do one of these builds, namely because it produces 7.5 per minute. And to get the modular engines running at one per minute, we just need... Oh wait, not the modular engines, apologies. The uh, adaptive control unit to run at one per minute, we are going to need... Was it? Yeah, 7.5 automated wiring. So, easy peasy, and we can double down if we need to. So, what we'd really want to do is get five modular engines running per minute. We've got five of those running per minute, that means it'll take a hundred minutes for them to complete. And so long as we get... Where is it? One of these running at one per minute, well, it'll take... 100 minutes for them to complete, and the two of them should complete roughly around the same time. Depends how which one we put in first, I suppose. Anyway, I'm thinking time to put in some alternative wiring, or automated wiring right here. After doing a little bit of research, it turns out the adaptive wiring, or the automated wiring, only has one purpose, to be thrown into adaptive control units. So I think we're just gonna build them all together. For example, we'll just have this one here, it produces 7.5 automated wiring, and then we're just gonna dump it directly into that. Like so. Yeah, that should be fairly handy. Then we just have to feed the three ingredients in the back for this one, and we'll feed the three ingredients in the front, or the two, yeah, three ingredients in the front for that one. Shouldn't be too bad. I think most of these resources come off the bus, don't they? A little bit of fiddling around, and we've got, well, okay, it's not quite finished yet, but I wanted to show you what we've done before I finish it because it's uh, a little bit trickier than normal ones. We've got circuit boards, heavy modular frames, and computers coming all off the main bus, right? So all three of those are just being dumped in off the bus as we normally do. Then uh, we do need to have adaptive wiring coming in. However, adaptive wiring, well, it requires wire. The problem with that is we, we don't keep wire on the bus. We keep caterium and copper, and then we feed that into a wire production machine, which then feeds itself into that. So if you actually go around the front here, you'll see that the, the wire is coming out the front here and getting dumped in this direction. And that sorts out wire. However, that does mean we need to put in two more ingredients in here, which is satyrs and high-speed connectors, and both of, but both, of, both of them come off the bus, so that's actually fairly handy. There we go. We've got the satyrs and the high-speed connectors coming in. That should fill up that machine nicely. Production-wise... Yeah, she's cranking up. Actually, we need 75 wire per minute. Let's underclock this sucker just a little bit. Doesn't need to be so uh, intense. 75 is fine. And then once that's finished, it should start feeding into this machine. And then that will give us our automated wiring. Oh, wait, no. Yes, that will give us our, our adaptive control units, which we can then feed into our... Our space elevator. Oh my god. There's so many different things you have to do in this. I'm thinking we'll stick the space elevator over here. We we'll can move it from then that section. This might take a few minutes. It is surprisingly easy to move a space elevator. They don't seem inconvenienced at all that I deleted the old one and replaced it. And it's also incredibly cheap. Anyway, we're, <laughs> we're set up to go to the next stage. All we gotta do is plug in the modular engines and the adaptive control units and we should be good to go. And in fact, I think we should already be producing adaptive, adaptive control units over here. So let's just check out how the production's been going. And uh, we should have a few of them in here. Four already? Excellent. Let's just hook this up and be done with it. Easy peasy. Now all we've got to do is stick together the next section. Ugh. Which, 
probably easy peasy. Let's see, what do we got? Damn it, I have to go get some wire. Next up is the modular engines, of which we need, well, 500. So we want to produce about one a minute, and each one of these only is, each one of these factories will only produce one per minute, so we're going to need five of these factories. The only thing that's a bit of an inconvenience here is we're going to need smart plating. And since each one of these requires two smart plating, we're, go or, yeah, each one of these requires two smart plating, so we're going to need ten smart plating to produce the necessary amount. Which means we need two smart plating machines and five modular engine machines. So, yes, I think in fact we're going to put uh, modular or smart plating on the bus. Namely because we're sort of running out of space. We're getting really close to this mountains over here. I'm probably going to have to start taking a left or a right or something. Or unless I can start blowing up mountains. No, 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 we don't have action access to that I think just yet. So, what we'll do is we will just put the smart plating right here. These two smart platings will feed, actually we'll just feed them directly into the next row. Which will be all those engine-y things. One second now Well, I put together the splitters. Would you look at that? Easy peasy. Plastic, rotors, reinforced iron plate, they all go in there and give us smart plating. Uh, that will give us 10 smart plating per minute between the two of them, and then all we have to do is rotate it around and feed it back into five more of these. Uh, how much power are we looking at right now? I think we're we're getting close to... Uh, yeah, 3.4 megawatts out of... Uh, or 3.5 megawatts has been drawn out of a potential for... You know, after this, we're definitely going to have to start upgrading our power grid. But no, 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 we're, we're getting we're getting this finished. We're getting this finished now because I, I want to knock this out today. And it's done. We, we've actually even produced our first two of those motors. Uh, we've got five machines going all the way along here. Excuse the darkness. I threw in one of those big lights up there, but it doesn't really seem to... Like, when you look at it directly, it doesn't show any light. Never mind. Let's not get distracted by the bad lighting of the lights. Uh, what we've got here is motors coming in rubber and uh, the smart plating is coming from over there. Though we're not quite saturating that belt yet. We will in time. And that goes all the way down to the end and all of those machines are running. Every single last one of them. And they're going to chuck the engines all the way out the front. And once those engines come out the front, they'll run all the way down here. Come on. And they'll get sent over to the space elevator. So in about a hundred minutes, we should have the last of everything we need done so that we can gain access to tier seven and tier eight technologies. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab a cup of tea. Well, I may have went for more than a tea, and I kind of let things run over just a tad, but not by much. And done. And yep, yep, come on. Fire that off. Excellent. And... Go on, do your zoom thing. No? Oh, you're just... There we go. Exit, we've unlocked other tier. I also moved the HUD over here. Or hub, yes. Uh, as well as that we had to do a whole bunch of bulking up of things, like for example the rubber. The whole rubber input line, we had to bulk that up by stuck on two extra rubber machines, uh, dealt with the outflows from that, upgraded the oil lines all the way back. Just a few bits and bobs here because things were getting a little stressed here and there. But that has opened up the entire tier 7 and tier 8 production section. So we've got bauxite. In fact, we can immediately knock out bauxite refinement. None of the others we can knock out as far as I'm aware. This one requires aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. Aluminum. <laughs> aluminum. Wait, wait. Not aluminum it requires supercomputers. Which, actually, we can afford supercomputers, but I think most of the things that you can produce at this require aluminum. Advanced aluminum. Uh, oh, that requires uh, fused modular frames. As far as I'm aware, they probably require aluminum. And particle accelerators, which will, of course, require aluminum. But, bauxite. This one we can handle. All we need is a bit of rubber, motors, um, heavy modular frames. Yep, yeah, we can knock this out in two minutes. After running around to all of our relative storage departments, we've got everything sorted. Done. That takes care of bauxite refinement. Now, what exactly Milestone did I buy reach. again? No, sh sh quiet you. Don't need, don't care. Uh, so that will give us aluminum, aluminum gets alucad, Al Alcad? Al Alclad? Whatever. Uh, aluminum casing, radio control unit, blender, scanner update for bauxite, and scanner update for raw quartz. One reason we were in a rush to get our hands on tier 7 is there is a diluted fuel recipe that is available on tier 7 after you've unlocked bauxite refinement. Now it's an alternative recipe so we do have to unlock it using one of the hard drives, but this gives us the option of finding it now and this is... Oh, this is incredible for power production. It basically doubles the amount of power you can get out of crude oil. Which is sort of a big deal. Right now, we have three pure coal nodes being fed directly into coal generators to generate all of this power we've got going on. And we're starting to, well, redline it. We came close there a couple of times during the, the production spree we were doing. So, it would be nice to have an alternative supply of power. Now, where was it? Uh, hard drives, yes. We still have about ten of these left. 
So there's a good chance we can pick ourselves up another, well, pick ourselves up the diluted fuel recipe and then start some massive oil production. Well, power production. Well, looks like our first result was not everything we were hoped for. We don't need this. Uh, you know what? We'll just go with the uh, radio control system. That one, that one can't hurt so much. Let's see if we can hopefully just knock out the turbo fuel real quick or the, uh, the diluted fuel real quick. Sometimes Randy just wants to give you the bad day. Fine, we'll take your turbo fuel blend that we don't want. That's that's grand. And we'll just grab the next hard drive. Oh, hallelujah. Look at that. Diluted fuel. That's exactly what we're looking for. Also, I do want that sloppy aluminum. Oh, in fact, I want a bunch of the aluminum ones. I'm thinking there's going to be a little bit of hard drive hunting coming up in the very near future. Before we go over the plan, the upcoming plan anyway, let's maybe grab a quick look at the factory from up on high. And we there we go. Would you look at that? It's beautiful. No, hey, come down a bit. No, that's far enough. No, oh, damn it. Uh, yeah, well, somewhere up here is. Oh, there's the, the space elevator. All right, uh, down there. There we go. There's our factory. That's the whole factory stem to stern. Ah, it's a beautiful little thing. And to think it just grows little by little. You don't even notice it's happening. And the next thing you look around and go, wait a minute, we built that? How long did that take? And then you realize you've probably spent way too many hours doing it. Totally worth it. I regret nothing. Well, actually, no, I, I regret some things, like some of the things I didn't build up soon enough, like rubber. Yeah, I, I had to go back and do a whole bunch of that. In fact, it's really interesting how much resources we were using there near the end. We had one adaptive control unit and five modular engines being produced per minute. Now, thanks to the calculator here, I was able to figure out exactly how much resources that was using. But considering all of our assortment of recipes, the most used resource was steel at 292.7 ingots of steel per minute. And you do bear in mind, we had the p potential to produce 470, so we could produce 470. We were well within spec. It was the rubber, though, that surprised me. We completely redlined the rubber. We ran out. I had to go back and uh, bump up the whole thing, but we were using 82 rubber. That was our second most used resource on the entire bus, and that was only because the module engi engines required so much. 74 for the water, and that was mainly to do with uh, refining the caterium, because uh, we're using... Uh, pure caterium, which you mix it with water to get more caterium out, because it's a, it's a rare resource, you want to stretch it. Copper comes in uh, in fourth place with 61, quartz at 43. Now, I didn't include it for, that's including the, sil the stuff we turn into silica and the stuff we turn into crystal or whatever. You know, I just decided to do it all in the basics because it's simpler that way. 24 caterium and 9.33 plastic. In fact, a bunch of that plastic is mostly going towards, well, I presume most of that plastic is going towards making uh, plates, iron plates. Actually, all of that plastic is going towards making iron plates. 9.33 plastic in, 84 iron plates out. Well, 9.33 plastic and 14 steel ingots in produces 84 iron plate. That is just so ridiculously efficient. Well, as, when you're using a bus like this, it's nice to know that the, the small amount of resources you pull off the bus gives you a large output. This is our base from a bird's eye view. Uh, over here on the left is where the space elevator is, and then the factory is, you know, built back that way. We, we started over here and moved uh, west. So, expansion plans wise, I'm thinking, well, power is our main concern right now. So I'm thinking there is three pure oil nodes and two regular oil nodes down here and a whole bunch of water. I say we install a massive diluted fuel production plant down here. Just churn out all the power we're going to need to get us to endgame. Well, most of endgame. Then after that, we're also going to need to get into bauxite so we can produce aluminum. And I found a perfect node of aluminum right there, or bauxite. Now we can mix that with a few things that are locally nearby. We're going to need coal for this. Uh, we might actually be using the sulfuric one. Where is it? Uh, yeah, there's some sulfur nearby and I'm pretty sure there's some oil nearby as well. There's a bunch of local resources that we can combine together to get a very efficient bauxite production up and running. Then, though, we need to get that back to our base, which happens to be quite far north. This is going to be the center of the map, so I'm thinking we run a rail network. I'll probably do something circular. I like circular rail networks. So the trains will go over, drop it off, and come back. We don't need a full belt of it, but 720, or even being able to pull out about 700 bauxite per minute, we should be able to do quite a decent amount of production with that. But if of course, we also need to get all access to all the last of the, the alternative recipes. So I'm thinking, first up, power. Get the, get the power sorted so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Second up, get all the hard drive recipes. And then third up, take care of the bauxite so that we can plug that into our main bus via train network and finish off the last of the industry. Well, that's the plan anyway. I am, yeah, I'm, I'm way over. I, sh I should have had this out today, but yeah holidays. I'll link the save game in the description for anyone who's interested and wants to have a look around, but uh, I think we're going to cut that out there for the day. I hope you enjoyed and good luck!